Hi everyone and thank you for tuning in today. Today we want to talk to you about torque wrenches and how do you use them. First, let's talk a little bit about why you want to use a torque wrench. If you need to torque down a screw, you need to know how much of it you need to torque down to. Too little of a torque and the screw can actually loosen up by itself and fly off. Too much torquing can actually cause the threads of the screw to crack off or even the nut itself might go into the metal and start cracking. So you have to be very careful to figure out exactly how much torque you need for any application that you use it for. Today I'm going to give you an example. Uh, an easy example is torquing up your lug nuts on your car wheels. When you take off your wheels and when you put them back on, you got to put the lug nuts back on. But how much torque do you need to put on there? Each car will have its own specifications. For my specific car, uh, it's a Mazda, and not necessarily all Mazdas will have the same torque value, but what you can do is you can look either in your user manual, or owner's manual, or even the maintenance manuals. And that should give you the torque rating. For me, I have two printouts from the maintenance manuals to kind of tell you how to look it up. So here's one of the technical data for the wheels and tires. And all you do is you look up what wheels and tires you have based on the columns and rows. And you look at the wheel and tire and you look for the torque, tightening torque. And you'll see that it's usually given in three different units. First one being in Newton meters, kilogram force per meter and foot-pounds and what you'll see here is three sets of numbers corresponding with those units so the first number would be for the Newton meters kilogram force per meter or how many foot-pounds you have here in this case my actual torque wrench you can calibrate it in kilograms force per meter or foot-pounds and I'll show you that in a moment. So for now, we'll work in foot-pounds. And since it says 65.06 to 86.73, you could choose a torque value between any of those ranges. For simplicity, I'll just use 70 foot-pounds. Another illustration you might see is this, and this is what you might find in your owner's manual or, again, the maintenance manual and basically it's a picture of your tire, your lug nuts, and the actual pattern you need to follow to tighten those lug nuts. So this is saying tighten the first one on top, this one second, third, fourth, fifth, and a crisscross pattern. And here when installing the wheels and tires, tighten the wheel nuts in the crisscross pattern to the following tightening torque. And here you'll see the exact same numbers as you saw before. The first one again, this one's given in Newton meters, kilograms force per meter and the third set in foot-pounds which again is 65 to 86.73 so we'll just choose 70 again so here is a torque wrench that I have that I use all the time it's the Pittsburgh Pro click type torque wrench and this is something you get at Harbor Freight Tools um, it's just something I use you could get better ones um, I'm not saying that this is the best one you can use whatever you guys feel is right for you you guys can go ahead and use it I'm just going to show you how you can count you can actually set up the torque wrench and use it okay so you open it up and this is what a torque wrench looks like you have the head of the torque wrench this is where you can put on all your sockets and this is the click type so what happens is when you're torque is reached you'll hear a small little click and I won't be able to do it with my hand but we'll show you later on what it sounds like and then this is a reversible head so you can tighten it and loosen it I wouldn't recommend using this as a normal socket and wrench just using it to tighten it up and then down here you'll see the barrel and you see some knurling on the on the handle that's to help you grip it and you see a lock locking mechanism here. So the first thing you want to do is see what units your 
your actual torque wrenches are in here. I'll zoom in so you can get a better look. So you can see on this one, it's in foot pounds on this side, and typically if you flip it over, you'll have a secondary measurement. And in this one, it's meters per kilograms. So right now we're using foot pounds, and we're going to set it to 70 foot pounds. So this particular wrench starts off at five foot pounds and it goes all the way to 80 foot pounds so we're using the right wrench for now because it's 70 is in between 5 and 80 so how do you do this so you have this tightening screw on the bottom to untighten it you go counterclockwise and it untightens this whole thing so that this thing can start turning what you have to look for is there's a line that goes right in the, in the middle right there that line that line basically lines up with these numbers here so right now it's set to five foot pounds because the bottom is basically lined up with the number five and you're at the zero line so when you increment it to number one you're at six foot pounds seven foot pounds, eight, nine, and 10. You could see that the top of this part here lines up with the 10 mark on the actual wrench. So you keep going until you, you're setting up the actual value that you want. So since we're going to 70 foot pounds, which is right up here, we gotta make sure that our little screw lines up here. So let's go ahead and do that. Gonna keep on turning this. And as you get to the higher ends, you'll notice that it is a bit harder to turn because there's a spring inside. And you keep turning you get there so let me do that and I'll come back okay so here we are. Oh, let's get that focus. Okay, so here we are. We're at 70 foot pounds. You can see that this is set at zero. It's lined up in the middle of the line and it's at the 70 mark right there. Say if you needed 68 foot pounds, what you would do is you would turn it back to because 65 is the next one down and you're at 70 70 minus 2 is 68 so you basically turn backwards and you're at 68 simple as that so when you're at your desired setting what you need to do is you go back to the locking nut and you go count clockwise and you just tighten it up so that way your wrench is set it's not going to move anymore and now you're ready to actually go and tighten your wheel nut. okay so now that we have our torque wrench set to the proper settings let's start torquing these nuts now keep in mind my car right now is not on jack stands Technically, when you're torquing up any tire, it should be lifted off the ground so it's not touching the ground. So I'm not setting my torque wrench to the highest setting. I'm just doing this for to show you guys what it will sound like when you reach your actual setting on the torque wrench. You should hear a little click. So here it goes. Torque wrench should be put on your light. When you're setting it, 
and you start turning it clockwise so you're tightening it and when it's to its right torque you'll hear this go to your next one third one And that's what the clicking mechanism does. You hear the click and it tells you that you've reached the right torque on your nut. Okay, now that we're done torquing up all of the nuts on our vehicle, what we want to do is we want to put the torque wrench back into storage because we're not going to be using it again. One thing you have to remember is that you don't want to store it with the torque wrench set to your highest settings. Um, there's a spring inside so right now the spring is highly compressed and if you leave it in there for a long time it may stay that way and it'll ruin your wrench so what you want to do is ideally you want to set your torque wrench back to these are lowest settings and then store it that way so again you unscrew the locking screw on the end counterclockwise and this one we're still at 70 foot pounds and since it's the lowest setting is five foot pounds we keep turning this counterclockwise because that reduces the torque value and you'll see as you get to the lower settings it gets easier and easier to turn and we're at five foot pounds Lock the screw again, and you're ready to put it back into your toolbox. There you go. Hope you found this very helpful. If you did, please hit subscribe, hit like button, and also leave a comment. See you again.